Hello and welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Materials. Today we're going to be looking at material functions, what they are, when to use them, how to use them, why to use them, because I was thinking it's actually surprising that I haven't actually made this video yet because material functions are, you know, one of the backbones of creating shaders and all that good stuff in Unreal Engine. So let's dive in. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to grab a right click in our, in our little window thinger. Uh, we're going to go to material and click material function. Uh, we're just going to name this Matt Funct tutorial and we can click on this. So we are greeted with basically your regular old material graph. However, the output is completely different to, you know, what we usually expect. Now, what a material function is, is a, a little piece of code or math or whatever you want to call it within a material that gets collapsed into its own little node with inputs and outputs and can be used inside a regular material graph. So for example, if we had uh, an input, and this input was a, let's just say it's a vector three. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one and divide by two and then feed it into our output. Now, one thing that you'll want to do if you're gonna be using this quite regularly is click this expose to library button. Bam, we save. Now, if we create just a new material, we look in here, we right click and we search Matt Funked Tutorial, you'll see that we have this fancy little node. And if we double click it, we're gonna see, okay, this is what it's doing. So we could have a, a texture, maybe like a, a normal map, and we want to debug what this normal map looks like for some reason. So we want to add one, divide by two. And now we can see our normal map, which without our little function would look like this. Now, the other thing about these functions is you can just use them multiple times in a material. I'm not really sure if there's any cost saving to using a material function versus just repeating the code, you know, multiple times. Uh, however, the nice thing about using material functions is that if you you know, let's say we were using this thing uh, like in a, in a bunch of different places for a bunch of different reasons and, you know, blah, 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 something, something, something. And then we realized, oh, wait, the math that I'm using for all of these functions is, you know, is wrong or needs to be changed. If we go into one of them and, you know, maybe we wanted to, maybe like there's some weird stuff about, I don't know, color space or something that I'm forgetting about. So maybe it's like, you know, something like that. Now that we've save that, it will be reflected in all of these material functions. Whereas if we were just, you know, using a piece of math or a complex function or something, and we had it in, you know, three different places in the one material and or different places in other materials, then we'd just have to, we'd have to go back. We'd have to gut all of our materials that we're using this piece of math and it would take a lot of time. Now, one example of uh, somewhere that this has actually saved my my hide is in a plugin that I'm working on at the moment. I'm doing a lot of shape drawing within a within a material uh, that's getting drawn to a render target. Blah 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 blah. And since I'm drawing these big arrays of shapes, what has happened is that I've wanted to add you know an extra parameter or an extra you know, input or change how, you know, some of the math works inside these functions. And I haven't had to go and get all this code and delete it and copy and paste the code again and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's just a matter of changing, you know, if I wanted this to not be one minus, we do that, then that will be happening in every one of these, you know, instances of the function. Now that brings me to another point, which is nested functions. So for example, I'm drawing a, a wind simulation uh, and we're drawing these capsules and spheres and blah, 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 blah. These are a material function, but inside the material function, there's another material function or multiple material functions and so on, so on. So that's just another really useful way to use material functions. One more thing that's quickly worth mentioning while I'm 
editing this, all of the parameters inside a material function, you'll be able to see them in you know, a material instance and whatnot. Um, so they do actually need a unique name. And if you are using the same material function multiple times in the same material, if you set one of those parameters, it will be getting set inside all of those material functions in that one material. Now, another really handy use for material functions is to create consistent kind of effects throughout your, your world. Uh, so for example, I have a Priz Wind Global, which is just like a wind effect thingo. Um, and I'm just gonna grab the debug output. We're gonna chuck it into the base color. And let's just grab some shapes. We're gonna get a big cube. Cube here and a cube here. I'm gonna tilt it around. And uh, I don't know, a circle, a 3D circle here, a cubic circle. And if we chuck this material instance onto these. And to further the example, let's just create a new material. So completely different material, but you know, let's just, uh, I don't know, invert this output so that the colors are around the other way. Uh, and we'll put that on, I don't know, one of these, um, maybe we'll duplicate it or something. So this is a pretty silly example, but you can see that all of the wind lines are lining up between all of these different objects and all of these different shaders. And that's because they are all executing the same code, albeit independently. So this function isn't getting processed somewhere and transmitting all of its data to everything else. They're just all coincidentally using the same math to, you know, do the same effect. Now, obviously, if you have input parameters and they're different between thingos, that might change it. And that kind of brings us to another example, which is using like a material function as a, like a color palette in a way. So we could have multiple outputs. So function output, function output, blah, blah, blah. And let's just call this grass color. And this could be dirt color. And this could be stone color or detone color, apparently. Detone color. So we can say grass is green and dirt is brown and stone is gray, grayish, gray, gray blue. Right, now if we go to our, our material, let's grab our matte funct tutorial thingo. Um, you can ignore the input for now. I, I could have removed the input, um, but let's just say, okay, this is our grass thing now we've got the grass color or we could say this is a stone material blah 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 so let's just say oh, this is grass and maybe this one is dirt and for example maybe we i don't know have a different material that has like a, a slope blend so we're just going to grab the vertex normal we're going to mask it in b and we're just going to use that in a lerp and maybe we're going to lerp between the grass color and the stone color so now we've got three completely independent materials. Uh, none of them are derived from the other. However, they're all referencing the same material function. So if in the material function, we decide, oh, you know, I want to change the color of, you know, the default grass that I'm using for everything to, you know, like a kind of autumn color, then, you know, we can just switch it out in the palette and it's going to change everywhere else. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you can't change the values in a material function at runtime. So I can't say, oh, I want to change the, you know, the grass color in this function um, to green when it, you know, is spring or something. That would be something that you need to do with a material parameter collection, which I do have a video about. Um, however, you can funnel your material parameter collection value through this material uh, function. So we could say, okay, blah, 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 blah. You know, we've got our current uh, grass color and put that into there and bam, this is actually fog color, but you get the point. And that way we could change, you know, the, the color of the grass at runtime. Um, and that would just save you, you know, having to get collection parameter, collection, select the collection, select the grass color, blah, 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 blah. You just kind of have it all in this 
nice little spot. Now, the other thing that is handy about kind of using this, uh, this kind of pallet method is if we wanted to say, okay, well, our grass is now going to be using like a kind of world space texture. So we'll go world position X, Y divided by, I don't know, 200, uh, we'll go 500. We're going to get a texture, just a random cloud noise or a Perlin noise or, you know, whatever suits your fancy. Uh, we're going to get this one. I'm going to add a bit of contrast. Um, and then we're going to use that in a lerp between this color and this color, and then put that into the, the grass output. So if we have a look now, you can see that the grass is now using this kind of world space nonsense, um, even when, you know, it's being used in another material, which is doing its own kind of blend and whatnot. And this is also, you know, consistent in like the, the actual tiling of it. So anything that is now sampling the, the grass color from the material function is always going to line up, you know, texture wise. So you can see that like this bit of the noise is uh, always in line, etc., etc. even if it is a different material. So you could be doing this independently in all of your materials. So, you know, we could grab this and say, okay, well this, we're going to do, you know, a lerp now with the green and the thing. And then, you know, when we've got the one with the, with the kind of slope blending going on, um, we'd have to do that same thing and blah, 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 blah. But then if we wanted to go back and change it and be like, oh, actually, you know, I, I feel like these patches of color are too small. Well, then you'd have to go through every single material and or, you know, landscape layer that was using or, or that was kind of relying on just having the same magic numbers to like look nice. I forget where I was going with this sentence. So I think you get the point. Uh, material functions, they can be very handy for getting consistent results between completely different materials. Now, it's probably worth telling you guys about some of the uh, the common, I don't know, errors that you'll run into when you're using material functions uh, and also what all of the kind of inputs, outputs, blah, blah, blah mean. So input is function input, but if you just search input, it'll come up. Uh, you can only have one of these actual red input nodes per name. So if this was the input and this was also input, then it will get angry. It'll say blah, 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 blah. It has to be unique. So, you know, if you wanted to use this in multiple places, could just draw big, lots of big noodles. You could also use the new named reroute feature and be like, oh, this is the input. So this is just like a local variable if you've ever done programming. So this, bam, input, and then recall our named reroute node. And then that can go there and it can also go here and it can also go there. The other thing is the function output. I don't know why tangent output comes up first, but function output is what you are looking for. Again, this has a, a name, so we'll call it, I don't know, out. I always give my, you know, functions uh, like a, a debug color out. So like if I'm doing like a, a wind function or like, you know, water waves and that kind of stuff, um, I'll always just chuck in a, a debug color out and, you know, remap all of the things to something that's within the zero to one range, just so we can kind of see what's going on. Now, these outputs don't have a type. They are wildcards. However, the inputs do have types. So you've got scalar, you got vector two, vector three, vector four, vector texture, 2D, texture cube, blah, 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 Boolean material attributes, texture. They do have to be set. However, I think if you've got like a vector three input and you plug in a scalar value, the scalar value will just automatically use up all three channels. Uh, kind of like when you add a scalar value to a vector, it just adds it to all three of the uh, of the floats in the in the vector. Now, next is the the preview pin on the input, um, as well as the there's a button here. Use preview value as default. Um, so if we had, you know, this then doing that, but we hadn't plugged anything into it, into the into the input, 
um, then it will throw an error because it's missing a function input. So, you know, th there's nothing going in here. It doesn't know what to do. It's going to throw an error. You could solve this by just putting in, you know, a value. Or what we can do is go into here. There's a preview value constant uh, here that we, you know, we can set. Uh, we want this to be red. And if we click the use preview value as default and we go into here and we get rid of that, then it's going to output the, the red. Uh, meaning it doesn't need an input. Uh, and the other thing we can do is actually, you know, do stuff um, outside of the thing. So maybe we want the preview to be, you know, like a, a text coordinate, um, blah, 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 rather than just constants. All right, and then when we plug that in and we go to here, nothing's plugged in there, but we still get our preview, you know, whatever it was. Um, so sometimes it can be good to like, you know, do a texture as the the preview but yeah i mean it can be really handy to not tick the use preview so that you know whoever is using the function probably you is like forced to put something in there uh, and it'll bring to attention when it doesn't uh, doesn't work right one final thing before we wrap up the video is that you've probably seen these blue nodes a lot before um, we've talked about some of them on the channel before like you know height lerp and the thing about these is that you can actually dig into them. So we can actually look at what is a height lerp doing? Well, it's getting the height texture, subtracting one. It's getting the input transition phase multiplied by two, adds them together, contrast, that gives us the height lerp. So you could even make, you know, your own kind of light versions of these functions. I know personally, for a height lerp, I only ever use this output and I don't actually do like the, you know, A and B and get the results. I only ever do transition phase, height texture contrast, alpha, and then, you know, do my stuff over here. So if you've ever wondered what, you know, some nodes are doing under the hood and they are blue, it means they are a material function and you can just look inside and see what absolute monsters there are in this engine this one just makes me sad i just i hate i hate the default grass wind no offense no offense to any simple grass wind enjoyers you know the the simple grass wind dance classic all right that's gonna wrap it up for this video i hope that you learned something about material functions how useful they can be i'm not usually like a big proponent of you know functions and i like to have everything just out in the open and i love all my little spaghetti lines but when it comes to math that you're going to be reusing a lot and in a lot of different places um it can really help to have a material function so that if you need to make a change to oh, I wanted this to be like 0 0.9 instead of 1.1. You just have to do it in one place and then it will automatically be changed in every single material that was using that piece of math within the function. So thanks for watching. I hope you join us next time to learn more about the uh, materials and the particles and the animation and the thing with the stuff and the schwam. Thank you very much to all of the patrons who support over at the Patreon page. Uh, if you do want to support monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month. But with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>